Greetings, fine folks. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Megan. I'm the Mood Read Queen. And we have a tiny, comparatively tiny, considering all the hauls I've done in the past, book haul. Because, guys, I'm trying to get my life together here. I know I've been saying it for months, but uh, maybe it'll change now. Uh, but I'm trying to organize my library. And I can't do that when I got stacks of books here, there, everywhere. And I remember one day when I was, you know, starting this channel last July, I said to you all and to myself, hey, maybe one day I'll like actually record all my videos in my library. Well, that was like, I don't know how many videos ago, 50. I don't really know how many videos I've done actually. Most of them are video, most of them are monthly wrap ups. <laughs> but anyway, um, I had some time, or I pretended I had some time, and so I'm recording this guy. Because I'm tired of not being able to post as much as I want to. So, oops, sorry. Yep. I knew this was going to be a problem, you know? I knew setting this up like this was going to be a problem, but I'm just going to try my best not to whack my little temporary desk situation. Okay, so um, we've got some book mail. Most of it's book mail, actually. Yeah, book mail. And then I've got like three, four books that I got at Barnes & Noble. There's another book. Hold up, I'm going to go get it. Okay, we found the book. And I readjusted this so I hopefully won't whack it again. I don't know. Okay, so let's do a show and tell and get out of here and like... 25 minutes or less, I am getting better at it, okay? I'm getting better at it. The, the idea is that the more videos you make, the, the, you know, the shorter they can be, right? My brain can't process that, though. Okay, so story time with Megan, briefly. So back in June, I went on this whole deep dive into Rowan Parish because that woman knows like the way to my soul. And one of the very first videos I recorded when I um, started posting videos on the YouTube was a, a an author deep dive. And so I at that point had read almost every single thing she had written at that point. I um, There was a few books that were coming out and right now, I think I just have like two, I'm, I'm close. Uh, she has a couple co-authored books that I'm still working on. Uh, not actively, but will be. So anyway, I made a whole video and then I was like, girl, you need to order these books. So I'd, I didn't want to like buy all of them. So I listened to audiobooks for most of them. Um, but I wanted to buy some of my favorites. Some of the ones I thought were just like, you know, I picked some of my favorites from each series um, that I read if they were available on her website. And then life happened, uh, for both of us probably. And, um, just like in the last month, I got my, my books. And I just realized that I, where did I put, oh, here it is. So I got a little postcard with a note, which you can't even see, but it's, it's from like literally Rome Pear's hand touched this, which I feel like weird saying that. Whatever. I'm like weirdly obsessed, okay? Like if, if I ever write anything half as beautiful as better than people or like best light plans, oh, we'll talk about it anyway. So Rome Parish, if you're like, girl, who are you talking about? Go, go watch my author deep dive video. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, what did I order? So I ordered better than people, which was the very first book I ever read by her. And I what I listened to it on audible because I randomly one day in June, they had an audible sale. I guess this is still odd. This is still like, let's be honest. This is like story time with Megan slash let's talk about the books I bought. Yay. But anyway, um, there's an Audible sale, and I don't do Audible sales very often, but I do maintain my every other month, like, membership, whatever that's called, because it's not the main, it's not the, like, the most expensive one, it's, like, the least expensive one, 
And I pay like a certain amount every other month so I can get a credit and, um, and just, you know, get their free, free library, like access. So anyway, I saw this book and I was like, Ooh, look, two dudes, which not, not to like oversimplify my interest here, but sometimes that's as much, sometimes that's all it takes. I'm just like, Oh my God, it's gay, which is like definitely probably not the best way to say that but sometimes I I that's my first thought I'm just like oh my god let's go so anyway I bought this book it was five bucks um on audible and then maybe a week later two weeks later I was driving I've had about like a two hour drive uh ish to a friend's house um and I just decided let's go like hello my whole life is me deciding (laughs) let's go Because it's called mood reading, guys. It's called mood reading. Which I'm really doing a great job at. I don't know if that's sarcastic or true. But anyway. um, So I listened to this. And it like broke me. And it was beautiful. And I loved it. And and Simon and Jack have like stamped themselves upon my very soul. So anyway. I've got a postcard that has garnet ron on it which you can't see but i'm gonna frame this shit i'm gonna frame it because it means a lot to me um and anyway so this is just a beautiful book and of course they're signed Ah! i literally never like and i have a copy of um, better than people back here but now i can like give it to someone who will love it as much as i do or borrow it, you know, like no one borrowing this. This copy of mine. Don't even. This is not even. This is not even leaving the shelf ever. So anyway, that was book number one. <laughs> okay, so then I also purchased Best Laid Plans, which is shiny, unfortunately. But this is book two in the series. And if you put a gun to my head and said, Megan, choose between Better Than People and Best Laid Plans, you basically have what happened <laughs> at the end of 2022 when I did my bracket video. So you can watch that. That was tough. I didn't choose actually. I said, um, no. (laughs) And then I didn't choose. But like, if I really had to logistically, very very logically, very calmly think about it, I'd probably have to say, because these two were literally were like, it was like down to these two and it was like so frustrating. I'd probably have to say better than people. Um, The main point being that the characters that we meet in this and the, that lays the groundwork for the second book, even though they're about two different couples, like this couple is still in this, and then these characters are still in this for the most part. And um, we wouldn't have book two without book one. That's sort of my rationale, but also, but also Charlie. That's it. I think about Charlie like once a day, probably. Like seriously. Um, so <laughs> more... I'm like, I'm in love. I'm so excited. I can't even, where do I put these now? These are like going to have to move out here and I'm going to have to like put some other stuff somewhere else because like, like I'm never not looking at these ever again. Then I got the remaking of Corbin Whale, which is like the trippiest, like weird, wonderful book. And I love it. And then I listened to, again, I listened to most of these because I went on a deep dive because I, after that, they're the reason I fell in love with, like, really, really, really fell in love with audiobooks. Because at that point, I had listened to maybe like, mm, like six or seven that year. Um, and then I literally plowed through like probably 40, 40 after, like, like when I ran into Rowan Parrish's audiobooks. So I haven't actually like read the um, physical copy. But this book is just beautiful and funky and fantastical and whimsical and strange and frustrating. And it's just beautiful. It's like beautiful human experiences. And so love is the real magic. You're right. It is. I mean, so I've heard. I don't really know. Um, And then I also got the second book in the middle of Somewhere series called Out of Nowhere. This book is like one of the hardest books I've ever had to read. And it is the, the series all kind of takes place at the same time. And then there's like spinoffs. And anyway, I, I explain all of it in my Rome Pairs video. But uh, I really, I enjoyed book one, but book two is about 
um, Colin, who is the brother to the main character in the first book. And Colin is like, like, he's a mess. He's a mess. He's like hardcore, like, um, internalized homophobia and self-hatred and shame and cutting and it's tough times. But this book was also just like, so good. Like the guy who read it, I looked him up afterward and I was like, dude, do you have anything else? You're freaking incredible. And he was like, nah. <laughs> but this one says there are two sides to every story, which there are because you really hate Colin in, um, in Daniel's book. But this, it doesn't justify entirely his actions, which I don't think it should, but I think it really does shed light and it's just beautiful. I loved it. Anyway, so I got those four books and I'm so happy. I'm like so happy. Anyway, now I don't know where to put them, but I'm going to figure it out. So look at that. I just talked for nine minutes. Wow. <laughs> We're not surprised. Okay. So then I got, what else? What order should I go on here? Um, I was at BAM, Books A Million, and I got the third and final book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. It's called Final Offer. Um, it's like the biggest one. I have not read any of these books um, by Lauren Asher, but they sound really good. They're like these CEOs, businessmen who like work at like Disney, basically, from what I can tell. And the first one's called The Fine Print. And then I think they, it sort of builds on that. But I think it sounds really good. And I just decided you already own all of them. You might as well just get this one too. Now, I have not read any Lauren Asher, but I just think it looks... Plus, look how cutesy these are. <laughs> Adorable. Yeah, I don't know really anything else beyond that. But I'm, uh, I'm excited about it. Plus, his name is Callahan. That's kind of hot. Callahan Kane. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. So I'm going to read that eventually. I don't know. Sometime before I die. Then I got some mail from Fae Crate. So I paused my Fae Crate for like three or four months. Three months? I, it probably hasn't been that long. And then I realized, so they, I still follow. And also I, I'm currently paused on, um, you know what I just realized? I was about to tell you, sorry. Let me just walk you through what just happened in my brain. I paused my Rainbow Crate Box as well, but I think Rad, it's called Rainbow After Dark or something. That's their like adult um, crate box. I just, I think they, I think it opened on March 3rd or something for you to sign up. Oh, I gotta go do that. I gotta do that after this. Okay, anyway. So I paused both of them because I was like, girl, you cannot keep affording this. I mean, 40 bucks a month adds up, you know? Um, and so I forgot that I had ordered some standalone books from them um, that were not in boxes, just like their special editions. And so those, those, those came in the mail and that was like super like unexpected. So one of them was called The Eidolon. It's by KD Edwards. Um, this is the um, like special edition, fancy, fancy cover. I don't know. But it's the third, it's the fourth book in the tarot sequence. Um, and it's like turning into a new like series, basically. Um, I have not read the tarot sequence, but I keep meaning to. So when this was on, when they were selling this, I was like, uh, yeah, I'll read it. Um, it doesn't really say a lot about what it's about, but I, you know, but what's, you know, it's pretty cool though. Here, I'll show you. Not that you can see this very well, but it's a double-sided, um, cover. So you've got like this cover, which it was already folded like that when I got it. And then you've got this cover, which I kind of like more. I haven't been able to decide, so I just kind of kept it the same. Um, each of us wears our own guilt differently is what it says in the back. Pretty cool. 
Um, I don't know. And it has like painted edges. Oh, here. I'll show you. It has like painted edges. Uh, and then, um, or sprayed edges. And then it also has art from different like fan artists, which I think is pretty cool. So it was probably, I mean, I'm sure it was worth it at the time. I forgot that I bought it. So I was like, cool. Like, don't you like that when you buy stuff and you're like, we're gone. I did that. Go me, you know? Then I thought I didn't buy this one. It's called Reforge just by Seth Haddon. I thought I didn't buy it. And then it came in the mail and I was like, yes, because <laughs> they were posting about it on um, Instagram. And I thought, oh, man, I don't think I bought that. I think I just like let it slip by. Oh, no. She bought it. She bought it. Also, is my hair, this is, I know this is random, but I feel like my hair is not even. <laughs> Curly hair problems. Uh, but anyway, um, this is like gay fantasy, which we all know how I feel about that. Um, I have no idea what it's about. And there's no summary <laughs> on here. It has sprayed edges. I am going to read it, obviously, but I don't know. I don't really have strong thoughts, excuse me, on what it's about because your girl has no idea. Anyway, it's so pretty, though. Like, look. Actually, you know what? I can show you. So, um, here they are or two boys. I don't know who they are, but I'm sure I'm going to be like obsessed with them eventually. Um, on one side it says, shall we face the world prime? And the other one says, whatever your highness desires. So I think one of them's like a, I don't know, king, prince, something. I'm really doing a great job. But um, I will say they do, Fate Crate does really cool special editions. I have the one, like several from them. Uh, I think the most I paid for was definitely the Wraith King set, which was, like, definitely 100% worth it. Like, I was obsessed. Okay. Then I bought... Okay. So this summer and this... Well, this past year, I read a lot of great books, and I had sort of put them in my cart thinking, you deserve this. Like, you're going to let yourself buy it when you have time and when you have the money, which um, is turns out never... And so um, I paid off my credit card, one of them, you know, because there's a lot of them. Don't ever do that, by the way. But, you know, um, so we learn from our mistakes. But anyway, um, I decided to go in my cart, my save for later cart, and pick up a few that I really wanted to get sometime, like, I think it was like in the middle of the summer, maybe like July, August, and I just didn't do it. One of the books I ended up getting was The King's Spencer Bride by Ruby Dixon. This was the first Ruby Dixon that I had read. Of course, I know all about her Ice Planet Barbarians. I do intend to check those out at some point. But um, I read this book. It was recommended to me uh, by, let's see, Jen, the book refuge, was talking about it. And I was like, that actually sounds good, you know? So I checked it out. It is fantasy. It's pretty tiny. But the size, like, the size of the book is quite actually... I won't say it's large, but it's like, it's a good, it's a kind of a chunk, like larger book. Um, there's another novella called The Half Orcs Maiden Bride, which I haven't bought that one yet because I really, really loved this one and I really, really wanted this one, but I will buy the other one too eventually. And then this is kind of um, linked in a way to a series that she has um, called it the, I have no idea, so let me, something about gods, shadow gods and different things like that. I can't remember. Um, but this could definitely be read as a standalone and I loved it. I loved it. And I don't know when the last, I don't know when I talked about it. Did I ever, oops, talk about it on here? I don't know, but it's like really good. Um, it is about this guy named, um, Matthew or, and this girl named Hala, Princess Hala. And it's like, it's like such a fascinating, like interesting story. And it's an older woman, older woman, younger man, which I'm normally not the biggest fan of those, but it's, um, it's really sweet. It's about this girl named Hala. She's a princess. Her father takes, um, the prince 
uh, this other kingdom hostage. His, his name is Matthew. Or he's pretty young at that point. He's eight years old, I think. And his father kills her father and takes over the city to get him back and just took his war. Yay. You know, and um, Hala would have been sort of um, because at that point she's she's queen for a minute before she loses her her um, her kingdom. And rather than kill her, they um, the little boy, Matthew, wants to save her life. And um, because she was kind to him, um, they put her in basically like a nunnery, like a convent. And she's just going to live out the rest of her life there um, in secret because, you know, her being out and about would be sort of blatant um, reminder of um, this previous kingdom, um, which there's, it's sort of, it's under Matthew or his father's rule. But anyway, she's, in, she's like 30 two or something and Matthew comes for her and she thinks he's going to have her killed and he was like dude if I was gonna kill you you'd be dead already and so anyway um he's like no I want you I've like I his father's dead he's the king now and he's like no this is what I want you don't you get it like I want to marry you it's adorable. And so there's this like, um, and also it'd be like joining the kingdoms, even though he's already the ruler of both. And, um, it's just beautiful. Like, I love it. Ugh. And he has to like prove himself to her. And there's just like, like marriage, um, like three night sort of, uh, custom that's also in the half orcs maiden bride. This book, it's so good. I loved it. I didn't give it five stars. I gave it five stars. And I don't do that. Except for when I'm obsessed, right? And then it's probably not accurate. Okay. Then I also let myself get um, The Black Prince by Ariana Nash. I wanted to get the whole Silk and Seal series, but this book was my favorite. And I talk about this in, weirdly, my most watched video. Like, I don't guys, I don't track my views. I barely hop on YouTube. I'm really bad. I know. Um, I'm not even on Instagram, but I do comment on my, like if someone comments and I re respond to them and stuff. And I occasionally, I think it was like a couple months ago, I hopped on and that video was getting so many views. I was like, I mean, so many is like relative, like there's over 200 views at this point. Um, I don't know why the video quality is shit. I think I say some good stuff, but you know, anyway, but this book is um, from the Silk and Steel series. It's the fourth book. And the first three books are like a trilogy telling one couple story. But it's not a romance. Not really. It's more like war and battles and stuff. But like enemies to lovers. But like real enemies to lovers. And then this is the fourth book. And it's about... Oops. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> Let me just whack myself in the face. Um, it's about the brother of one of the of the dragon main character dragon shifter main character from the original series lysander um and his brother's his name is akeem and it this book was so freaking good i loved it and weirdly i was reading this book at the same time that i was reading all the Roan parish books and they sort of like bled into this like beautiful gay like i don't know like smoothie i don't know <laughs> But it was like very interesting listening to those books and then reading these books on my Kindle. And it was just oh, amazing. I, there were, there are like lines in here. Ugh. I can't wait. I freaking love this book. Anyway, such a great book. Ugh. And then finally, um, Grace Draven got the paperback set up for um the ippos king and it's been out for a while now um it took quite a long time for the paperback to be available and then it took me a while to actually get around to buying it but i freaking love the ippos king this is how much i love the ippos king i bound a copy by hand i made it up i never bound anything before in my life and i put it in my classroom um because i had a kid who was reading the uh, the initial Wraith Kings duology. And she's like, I don't do ebooks. And I was like, I got you, fam. 
And I literally, I was like, it was so fun. Um, I had a great time with it. But this is also just excellent. God, Grace Draven, she's going through cancer treatments and stuff right now. Um, if you follow her Facebook page or her Instagram, she's amazing. Like, I don't know if um, she'll be able to keep up with her release schedule or not. Um, but that's obviously not the most important thing. Uh, but she's just fantastic. And if you love fantasy romance uh, and you want something interesting and you feel like everything you read is like, you know, like Akatar. Um, which I love Akatar. Do not get me wrong. But Grace manages to do some really interesting stuff in all of her books, which is why I have all of them. And this guy can now go back up here, even though they're all, is it bigger? If it's, if it's taller, I'm going to be mad. Whatever. It's fine. Like, ugh. Cerevic. <sighs> okay. Cool, cool. So then, um, then I got, I was on, what was I doing? I was on Instagram and KJ Charles, um, weirdly, actually I have multiple KJ Charles books to show you. Um, KJ Charles is the author of many, like sort of gay historical romances as well as sort of, um, paranormal and, um, but they're all, I think, fairly historical. So anyway, um, she wrote the Charm of Magpies series and the World of the Charm of Magpies. So that sort of expands on those and that initial trilogy. And I read that last year. I really, really liked them. Those covers are ugly, though. And then I was doing research. I don't know why I was doing research on something. And I came upon the um, two versions from Taiwan and Thailand, which I showed in my Charm of Magpies video, um, which I think came out last July or August. Um, and then, so anyway, I was on Instagram and she shared the Japanese cover for one of the books. And I said to myself, oh, fuck. <laughs> so anyway, because, you know, um, I haven't shown you my collection. I've shown you those, but I also have a collection um, of books from uh, in different languages of my favorite like series of all time, which we will, I haven't made a video about it because I think I'm a little afraid. Um, and anyway, so I technically do have Japanese books uh, as well um, from another series, but I don't have any from KJ Charles. So anyway, I hopped on yesasia.com, you know, just super handy. And I bought, um, so this is the first one. Um, it's called the Magpie Lord. So I would definitely, if you like, um, gay historical romance with like some supernatural sort of magic elements, definitely check these out. They're pretty short and, um, they're really, I thought entertaining, but also we love a good illustrated moment. So, I mean, look at these guys. You see that? Ugh. You know, it was worth the $70 it cost me, probably. I think it was $70 bucks, um, to uh, buy them. And then, I don't know if I had to ship them. I can't remember. But, oh, this is when I think they're going to die. Spoiler alert, they don't die because it's a trilogy. Um, it's just precious. Um, I highly recommend you check them out if you like anything like if it sounds interesting to you. So that was book one, um, which is uh, The Magpie Lord. Book two is called A Case of Possession. I mean, there's also like some slight, like sort of BDSM in these books, which I think is interesting. Like dominant submissive as well. Um, let me show you some more pictures. Not all of them are super good, but... I can actually show you these because the ones in my captive prints, like my Japanese ones of those, oof, they are like inappropriate. You know, I can't remember their names right now. Lucian and, and um, I have no idea. I can't remember. Their, I can't remember their names, even though I should. I don't know how well 
you can see this. You know, every third video I say, I'm going to find better lighting. Oh, look. Yeah, this I can show you this because they're in a bathtub. How cute. I love them. I actually, this year might be a reread year. I got to say, I, you know, I was supposed to do rereads in the fall of last year and I just didn't. And then this is my, the, I don't know if it's my favorite book, but it's The Flight of Magpies. It's the last one. And, I mean, look at these guys. They are precious. What other names even? Oh, Stephen Day and Lucian Crane. Yeah. That's their names. I just, of course it came to me because, like, I love them dearly. Um, I want some fan art. Look at my babes. Look at them. Oh my god. So cute. Hey, look, this video is not going to be half an hour. It's going to be like 35 minutes. Who knew? Who knew? Okay, hold on. Now that I've committed, I really got to show you every picture. This one's kind of scary, actually. Like, I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it looks kind of like Android, like robots. They're not, but they've sort of been beaten. You know, brutalized at that point. Yeah. So anyway, um, I got those, which I was super excited about. And now I don't know what to do, do with them because now I have this series in three languages. I don't have it in English because, like, I have it on my Kindle in English. And um, the English covers are really <laughs> questionable. Okay. But then I got a few more things at Barnes & Noble. I walked in the other day randomly. I had dinner with friends. Um, and then I was like, I was right there and I thought, let's just go in. And so I ended up picking up, um, another book by KJ Charles, which just got released, The Secret Lives of Country Gentlemen. Um, it looks really cute. And I, I was so mad at myself. It was buy one, get one 50% off, but I couldn't find another one that I wanted. So I just picked this up. Um, but it's about Gareth who, um, let's see here. They live in the marsh, which is like, a, it's just a strange, empty place that is notorious for its ruthless gangs and smugglers. And there's a guy named Joss Doomsday who runs a smuggling clan. And the new baronet, which is Gareth, is a an old lover of his and they reunite. Um, but then they just want to be able to be together. Um, and I just think it sounds really cute. An unwary gentleman and his charming smuggler prince find love amidst skullduggery, danger, and murder most foul. <sighs> I love it. I'm so excited about it. Anyway, so that's another KJ Charles book. And then I got um, this book by April Green. Oops, sorry. Um, that's called Bloom for Yourself. It's a poetry collection, which you probably, for some reason, cannot see very well. Here. Maybe better. Um, and I got it because I like a good poetry collection. And I like to keep up also on collections that are being published because I, I publish collections. Um, and so I kind of like to, like, keep an eye on what's being published and what like I find interesting, what I don't find interesting. So this one looks pretty good. I it doesn't have a summary or anything, but I think I'll like it quite a bit. Um, I mean, a lot of poetry is pretty easy to relate to. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes it's not. You know, I worry about that too with mine. But um, yeah. And then I got last one is called September Love by, and I actually never said her name out loud. Lang, leave, Liev. Um, and I just thought it looked really cool and interesting. I think I have another book by her, but I have never read it. Um, and the back says, I used to think love had no limits, but I draw the line at myself. Um, so I'm excited to read this too. Like I haven't read as much poetry as I wanted to in the last year or so. Um, I've bought some. I just haven't read enough, I feel like. Um, I've been really busy writing my own and 
trying to write the thesis and all the papers and do all the things and grade all the things, you know, I just, anyway. So I got this. And that, my friends, is it. Um, I am so excited. I literally cannot wait to put these on my shelf. Um, and I don't know if that was interesting to you, but, you know, I decided a lot of those were ones that I wanted, that I let myself get, um, and I feel good about it. And then the Rome Parish ones were just such a, a lovely surprise. Truly, truly a lovely surprise. It did not see, like, I didn't know they were going to be coming. I thought I'd given up on them. Um, and so I was just really glad that they came. So thanks, thanks for, for hanging out. And um, we're working on making more videos. We're working on making more videos. We're also working on allergies. <laughs> but anyway, that's it. I will see you next time. Farewell.